from Absolutely Productions. This is Branchburg with Brendan and Corey. Branchburg Mayor Barbara Braskin is under fire for throwing a chair at a group of Cub Scouts who she mistook for little policemen. The incident occurred during yesterday morning's A Coffee with the Mayor, where Mayor Braskin was set to honor the Cub Scouts for disassembling an 18-wheeler and putting it back together for memory. Witnesses recalled the Scouts entering the room, followed by the mayor shrieking and, then with one arm, hurling her chair in their direction. None of the Scouts were harmed. Assemblyman Charles Bateman ended up being the one to take a photo with the Scouts, while Mayor Braskin ducked into the kitchen and hid. The town council has taken a motion ordering Mayor Braskin to undergo an eye exam. Okay everyone, Tom's father, Mr. Florian, will be our next career day speaker. Uh, So, Mr. Florian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Yes, well, (laughs) um, considering I got scheduled to do this presentation six months ago, uh, but I've since been let go from my job at Pfizer, so I guess I'll need to shift gears on my presentation. (laughs) Um, I've been doing some thinking, and, well, I think maybe for the next chapter of my life, I've decided... I'm going to be a fireman. I will be a fireman. I will. I will be a fireman. Yeah. Yes. I will be a fireman. I will be a fireman. I'll show all of you. I'll be a fireman. When your house burns down, you will have to answer to me. I'll throw axes at your windows. I'll climb your walls. Children, great news. I'm going to be a fireman! Have no fear, your nightmares of burning alive are over! Tom's father will save all of you. I'll extinguish your oven, I'll give CPR to your dog! Children, I'm going to be a fireman! All of you will owe me your lives, but I don't need your money! Tom, Florian, Senior, Branchburg Fire Department! Children, everyone, hop on my back! I will show you how strong I am! Okay, kids, I will no, be a fire. No, 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 no. Don't, don't form a line. Sit, just sit back down. Mr. Florian, thank you so much. I think we... Yeah, no, we, we've had enough. You're welcome. I'm hoping I can stick around for lunch as I smell pizza and freshly baked chocolate chip cookies in the air. Last year, I'd gotten knee surgery after a skiing accident and was forced to spend most of the summer with a large cast on my left leg. Whenever I needed to get anywhere, I was dragged around in a wagon by my surgeon's 14-year-old son. Apparently, the kid needed a summer job, and since the mayor was using all the wheelchairs in town for some sort of public transportation experiment, he was really my only available option. Initially, I wasn't keen on having some kid I'd never met pulling me around in a wagon. But his father insisted. He doesn't get out enough, he said. When I asked his father why he wasn't the one doing it, as, after all, he was the cause of my leg cast, he said he was going on vacation. I eventually found out this wasn't true, because I saw him getting pulled over for speeding on three different occasions over the next month. Also, his son was still in town, dragging me around in a wagon. He was a quiet and stoic young man, so I never learned his name. Our days together would begin with the boy showing up at my front door around nine, wagon in tow. I'd tell him where I needed to go that day, and then he'd lift me up off the ground, place me inside the wagon, and haul me to and from my desired locations. No small talk, no long talk. He was all business. Every day I'd ask if he wanted lunch, which would be my treat, but he'd always shake his head no. I don't think I ever saw him eat anything. Come to think of it, I never saw him drink anything either. I guess that just wasn't his thing. Mostly, he'd take me to run errands and perform various tasks. When we'd go to the supermarket, he'd push a shopping cart full of my groceries in front of him and drag me in a wagon behind him. My cousin got married this summer, and they were actually able to get the boy a seat for the reception. Since I was a groomsman, he had to be a groomsman too. 
and I think he had a pretty good time. On the dance floor, he just swung me around, and everyone loved it. I'd never had anyone drag me around in a wagon before, but I could tell he was excellent at it. Roads, sidewalks, fields, he handled them all with ease. Sometimes kids his age would walk past us, and initially I was worried they'd make fun of him, but none did. Mostly, they just seemed to respect him. And as for adults, I could tell most were jealous of me. The boy got more than a few offers from folks to drag them around, and in fact, one guy was even willing to pay 50 bucks an hour. But the boy always said no. He just didn't seem to be interested in money. One time I gave him a Sacagawea dollar as a tip after a long day, and he turned around and threw it straight into traffic. When I asked him why he did that, he quietly said he was making a wish. I hope it came true. The only hiccup we ever had was when I thought it would be a fun idea for us to take a beach day. Unfortunately, it was a disaster. I don't know what I was thinking. It was a six hour walk to get there, the wagon kept getting caught in the sand, and the boy immediately got caught in an undertow when he went in the ocean. On the walk back home, he kept angrily tipping me out of the wagon, and even though it hurt my leg real bad, I honestly couldn't blame him. By the end of the summer, the boy had gained 40 pounds of muscle from pulling me around everywhere. He'd become absolutely enormous, a sizable difference even for someone who saw him every day, and I told him he should go out for the high school football team. He was hesitant at first, saying he'd never played football before, and asked who would drag me around if he was out playing football. I only had one more week with the cast, so I told him I could handle it. He said he'd think it over. A couple months later, I saw his dad at the supermarket and asked him if his son ended up playing. He said yes, but his voice started to quiver. He said on the first day of practice, his son tackled someone so hard they got paralyzed from the neck down. He didn't know his own strength yet, I guess. Apparently it was a real bad scene. His dad said he ran off the field in tears, hasn't played football since. Doesn't leave his room unless he has school. His grades have taken a turn for the worst. As for me, I can ski again. So, I had a fun time this winter. I was a little skittish at first, but eventually I felt like I got my old self back. Yep. Went down a few black diamonds, had a pretty good time, met some good people. Yeah. I've lost touch with the boy. I'm not sure what we talk about now that he's not dragging me around in a wagon. Didn't talk about much to begin with. Maybe he'll write about me for his college essay. It could be titled, The Summer I Dragged Around a Grown Man in a Wagon. Can't imagine a college admissions officer not reading on after that. Okay, here's the check. Just pay whenever you're ready. Oh, I already have it right here. Oh, great. Thanks. Uh, have a good day. You too. Thanks. Can anyone give me a ride home? Is anyone finishing up? Anyone uh, give me a ride home? Anybody going west on 22? Just drop me off near the library? I can pay for your breakfast. I mean, depends what you get, though. You got extra meat, I um, you know, don't go overboard, but. They want going west on 22? On the way back? They can just give me a ride? I'm ready to go when anyone else is. I can wait, too. How about you? Oh, you didn't get your food yet? Okay. No one's leaving yet? I can pay for someone's breakfast. I mean, and again, like, one meat is fine, but, you know, don't get, like, extra sides. If you don't have extra sides, like, that's fine. Like, I mean, don't, don't order, like, extra, extra meat, but if you get, like, one on the side, that's okay. I I'm ready to go, but, uh, I can wait. I'll just 
get another coffee. Oh, well, I already cashed out, so I don't know. If... I mean, actually, we could just add it to your bill since I'm already paying for it. You give me a ride home. Can anyone give me a ride home? Took the car to the shop the other day. Needed oil. Anyway, the mechanic finishes up, and he comes over to me and says, Your car's due for an upgrade. <laughs> they always try to get you with something. So I looked him straight in the eye, and I said, No thank you. This isn't my first time around the block. But then he said, Don't worry. The update's free. I mean, I really don't know much about cars, but... I know when someone's giving you something for free, you take it. But, uh, next thing I know, he's installed a brake pedal on the passenger side of my car. You know, like the kind drivers and instructors have. That's in my car now. Could have punched the guy right in his eye. But he said this is what the manufacturer recommended. I said the hell they did. He said, I don't know what you mean by that. That we didn't say anything for a while. Then I left. It's fine when you're the only one in the car. Not too much risk of anyone hitting it. I'd just keep the sunroof closed, just in case a bird would fly in and land on the pedal. Didn't care for much for the sunroof anyway, so no big loss. Windows felt weird on my bald head. But when there's someone else in the car, that's when the real trouble starts. My wife's always kicking it by accident. I told her she should just sit in the back seat, but she said she didn't want to said it would make me look like her chauffeur. <laughs> yeah, as if I'm not that already. And she doesn't like to drive. Not a fan of how steering wheels feel, so now she just doesn't go anywhere. It's rough if I'm driving a client around. They're only human, so they get tempted to hit the brake like anyone else. They seem to really like doing it when I'm at a red light, and it turns green, and I'm trying to hit the gas. They just love seeing the look of confusion upon my face. I actually had to make one guy sit crisscross applesauce the whole ride so he'd stop hitting the brake. Then he got a cramp and I had to pull over. Cars were going by a 75 while I ran to the other side of the car to help stretch out and unfold his legs. He's screaming about how he's going to have to use a wheelchair or something. Then motions got the best of me and I slapped him across the face. Real mess. We lost that account. I had a carton of milk fly under the brake when I was driving alone. Nearly flipped the damn thing over. I do Uber, you know, just to make a few extra bucks. That's been real rough lately. People used to only ever sit in the back seat, but now, well, they take one look at my extra brake, and I'm sure you can imagine. Can't say anything though, don't want my rating to go down, so I let them just wail on the damn thing. I'm always real car sick by the end of the night. Something I learned last night is if they hit the brake at the exact same time as I hit my brake, and I mean exact, perfect timing, my trunk opens. I don't know why. I guess Toyota knows better than I do, I suppose. I mean, it's kind of neat. Not really sure of its function. Uh, I haven't noticed any other cars on the road with my update. Maybe it's just the specific model. Always thought it was a pretty popular model, though. That's Uber. Somebody needs a ride. Honey? What time is it? Clark and Jennifer Hardy have been together for 20 years. Anyone on the outside would consider their marriage to be a successful and happy one. They've paid off a mortgage. They raised two sons. The eldest graduated at the top of his class. And every summer they take the family up to Lake George. But that doesn't mean they haven't had their ups and downs. Currently, they're enduring what could be the toughest challenge of their marriage so far. That's because Clark has found himself stuck inside the walls of their home, where he's been trapped for the past six months. Dad, I think I knocked out a nail. It's unclear how Clark got trapped inside the walls. 
The first thought one would probably have is, why won't the Hardys just tear down part of the wall so Clark can escape? The truth is, the Hardys have been preparing to put their home on the market since the boys went to college, and Clark remodeled their home just last year, installing new drywall and insulation in most of the rooms. Tearing down even one of the walls would set the Hardys back thousands of dollars, and with two kids in college, that's something they just can't afford. The first month he was trapped in the walls was the hardest, as Jennifer had to adjust to this new life, and Clark couldn't get past the heating pipes and would regularly scald himself. Because of this, Jennifer had to sacrifice more than most that winter. She forwent increasing the heat in the house so Clark could stop getting burned. She regularly went to bed wearing a heavy coat, all while hearing Clark venture through the walls downstairs to find insulation to sleep between. The holidays were especially rough, as the boys had a hard time seeing their father like this. Merry Christmas, boys! Dad, what presents I got? Soon, Clark developed a short temper, a cause of him barely being able to stay alive on a diet of bugs, squirrels that wandered inside, and the condensation from the pipes. Each day became more uncertain, scary, and frustrating. The couple frequently took this out on one another. Before, when you asked Jennifer how she met the man she vowed to love forever, through sickness and in health, retelling this story never failed to draw a smile. In 1989, Jennifer overslept for a 9 a.m. cycling class. Fortunately, there was an opening for the 11 a.m. where she'd bike next to Clark, who'd then ask her to get coffee later. But memories as fond as these take a back seat to the demands of the current day. Clark took his last vacation day months ago, and recently Jennifer has had to take an extra Sunday shift at the JCC to cover the bills they otherwise would not worry about. When she does come home, there is no dinner prepared for her, no housekeeping done, just an empty home, with the exception of the man she met 30 years ago shuffling somewhere within their walls. Where'd my shoe go? Jennifer still thinks fondly of how they met, and she still thinks it seems like destiny. But if one believes that events like those, the kind one rewrites in their mind is predetermined, as something that was always meant to be, one also must believe there are negative events that are also always meant to happen. She hasn't felt this lonely in years. Clark is there, of course, but he may as well not be. They haven't seen each other face to face in months, and because of the darkness inside the walls, he never knows what time it is, causing their schedules to rarely align. She's sick of feeling alone, being overworked, having to resort to the Wendy's drive through to get a quick, sustainable meal in after the all-too-frequent 12-hour workdays. Smells like burgers. She wonders if this is how the rest of their lives together will go. She wonders if instead of an enjoyable and well-earned retirement, she'll still need to work despite her age and decreasing health, and he'll still be stuck behind a quarter inch of drywall. She's thrown herself into her job even more so to avoid these thoughts. She's training a new hire. He's her age, and they immediately got along. He's smart. He's funny. He's kind. She finds herself thinking about him even when they aren't working. Lately, she's even begun to wonder if she might be attracted to him, and in a darker moment, she thought about running away with him and putting the house on the market without Clark knowing, still encased within. She ran to her car and cried after thinking that. But she wonders if there will be a point where she'll need to move on with her life, and he with his that there may finally come a day when they'll need to resign themselves to the possibility that Clark may never get out of the walls. Hey, honey? Honey? The battery's in the... Jen? Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to This is Branchburg with Brendan and Corey. They'll be glad you did.